And today we're going to be talking about this very exciting product called the LE300 and it, this is a lithium ion battery extension module and I'm going to hand, a, hand you over to Daniela who's going to uh, tell us a bit more about this. So, so Daniela, um, what is the LE300 all about? Hi Lee, thank you for the introduction. So yeah, as you said, it's a lithium extension for lead-acid battery systems in 12 volt. It's a plug and play system, which forms a hybrid together with the lead-acid battery system. If you like, we can have a look at this video here. Great. Okay. The LE300, an innovative lithium extension battery that upgrades and enhances the performance of new and existing 12 volt lead acid battery systems to a smart battery system. Engineered and manufactured in Germany, the modular storage capacity scales to suit a range of battery sizes and applications. Simple plug and play connection to a lead acid battery means installation is quick and easy. The smart battery system requires no modifications to existing system components. The inclusion of lithium battery technology to your battery system will protect your lead acid batteries and extend their lifespan by up to 10 years. State-of-the-art lithium cells are combined with integrated battery management technology and cell heating, enabling full battery performance in a wide range of temperatures. To cope with even the toughest of terrains, the LE300 is housed in a robust, shockproof and vibration-resistant enclosure. The user interface display always keeps you informed of the battery status. Inbuilt safeguards protect both the battery and the user from accidental misuse for maximum safety. The LE300 is available globally through BOS distribution partners. Thanks for the video. That's that's great. Um, so it's a it's an extension that goes on your lead acid battery. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what? Why should someone buy this this product? What what are the advantages for who who is it aimed for? Yeah, I think like the reasons to buy it can be very individual. There are many features to it that can make it more or less interesting for for or people, like interesting for for diverse region uh, reasons. Like well, of course, you can extend the lifespan of your lead acid battery, and you can just combine it with the lead acid battery system you have. So, first of all, of course, it is interesting for everybody who has a functional lead acid battery system and does not want or cannot exchange it, but still wants to add capacity. But then also it may be interesting for people who have a very small boat because they don't want to add a big lithium battery to it, for example, and you just go with the little module step by step. It can be interesting for people who go out in the cold. We will talk about this later. It gives you more functionality into the cold. So there's actually various reasons. This, um, which make it interesting for different kinds of people. Okay, and and the say a lead lead acid batteries are, are sort of um, based on capacity. So uh, uh, seventy five amp hour, one hundred and ten amp hour. How much capacity does the um, the LE three hundred have? The LE three hundred has twenty eight amp hours, and you can use twenty five point two of them. So basically, this means you can all, almost use 90% of its capacity, whilst with the lattice battery, you should only use about 50%. So you have a good, um, like, big advantage here in what you use compared to size and weight. Okay, uh, for, for um, viewers that don't understand what an amp hour is, can you just explain, uh, you know, what, what amp hour or AH means as in terms of battery technology? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's just the storage capacity. If you compare it to water, then you could say like, it's not 25 amp hours, but 25 liters. And if, for example, you consume five liters every hour, 
your tank will last, your water tank will last for five hours. The same if you come, if you consume five uh, amper per hour, um, then also your battery will last for five hours, for example. Okay, so you use this in conjunction with a, a, a lead acid battery. Mm -hmm. What effects does it have on the lead acid battery? It has diverse effects, so it protects the lead acid battery. If you like, we can also, first of all, see a little, some, um, some pictures here. Yeah. So, yeah, what it does, if you see here, that we have both batteries, the lead acid batteries and the lithium. And on the left, we have the state of charge. And on the bottom, we have the time. Okay. What it does, like, you see the discharging and charging curve here. Yes. So what it does is that it always discharges first the lithium, or mm -hmm. generally discharges first the lithium, and only when the lithium is empty will discharge the lead acid battery. This oh, means, got you. Yeah. yeah, this means that the lead acid battery will always be as fully charged as possible. And that's what extends its lifespan by up to 10 years. And then in the recharging, it'll charge the lead acid battery first, and then it'll, um, and then only when the lead acid battery is almost full, will the lithium start to charge. So yeah, the thing is to, the idea is to always protect and prioritize the lead acid battery. Got you. So, so without the lithium ion extension, your, your lead acid battery, if you're discharging it almost fully and then recharging it like a charge cycle, your batteries, your lead acid battery is not going to last that long because uh, it, it doesn't enjoy the uh, deep cycles. Yeah, exactly. Like lithium can really run cycles up and down all the time. Like it's it's made to be flexible and it likes that actually. It doesn't like to be fully charged all the time. And lead acid batteries are just the opposite. They in, they like to be fully charged all the time and just sit around basically. And that's how we use it. We use the lithium as for the daily cycles for really charging and discharging regularly. And the lead acid we use as a backup, which then sits there. And yeah, you can extend like, also if you take very good care of your lead acid battery in daily use, you could also have a good lifespan. But here, obviously um, you have the effects of both and that what you want you can really also use both batteries very well together okay so so i can also see that um say if you if you had your lead acid uh, battery not being charged throughout the winter sat on the boat in the cold and if you had an le 300 um lithium extension um, module would that stop your lead acid battery from um dying over the winter from um from discharging over the winter yeah, exactly. So the LA300 is programmed to wake up every two minutes and check on the lead acid battery. And if it sees that it has to be recharged, it will charge the lead acid battery from its own capacity. Obviously, this depends on the product or on the system configuration. You need enough lithium capacity for your self-discharge of the lead acid battery and also the standby consumption. But yeah, if you have like the right system configuration, it can really keep your lead acid battery full all winter long. And especially during the cold um, periods of winter when the a discharge lead acid battery is most sensitive. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, other, the other thing is um, a question that's going to uh, pop up for uh, many users are, do they need to change their battery charging system, i.e. either the alternator or the mains power, because lithium batteries are charged at different voltages to lead acid, or does the battery management system in the LE300 cope with just a standard battery charge or alternator? Yeah, exactly. So the, uh, the, the battery management system in the LE300 copes with the existing lead acid battery system so you don't have to exchange the charger you can just really leave your system as it is you can use new batteries and also existing batteries that's a big advantage um and yeah you just plug and play connect a positive and negative cable either to the battery poles of the lead acid battery or also to the central plus and minus on your boat okay uh, let's just go into a bit more um, about the installation of it, because it, it looks to me, I mean, that 
has a very similar side footprint of a standard battery. So, so how would these are these relatively easy to install? How have you got any examples of installation or any, to show people how, how you would install these? Yes, it's really with plug and play cabling. So I will go back to the presentation. We can see somebody here doing it. Uh, oh. or, well, let's let's have a look at this picture first. What we see here is we have six modules here and each one has one cable going to the battery. So every module is really connected to the battery itself. That's important because every module functions individually and also has its own intelligence. And then they're also connected between each other. And these are connected to the poles of the lead acid battery. And if you see it here, it's really a plug and play thing. So you just have to add these cables from the batteries here to the central plus and minus, or as I said, to the lead acid battery. If you want to have a closer look at installation videos, you can find them online on YouTube. We have uh, one with a single module, then we have them with pre-configured battery cables. That's really important because the pre-configured battery cables we have, they are brown and black. And here the black is actually the positive and the brown is negative. That can confuse people. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know. And we have the example of connecting two modules and also extending. You can also, and that's important, buy, for example, one module first and then extend it with more or even start with two and then extend it to four or to six, however you like. Okay. Um, so if we're looking at it's like a, it gives you a hybrid type battery, a lead acid and lithium battery. Mm -hmm. Why not just, in, why doesn't the user just install a, pure lithium system and not um, not the LE300 not the LE300 yeah that's that's a common question and it's also it's because both batteries also the lead acid battery they have good things about them so like first of all let's let's start with the LE300 as such you have small modules so you don't have to buy like a very big lithium battery at once you can scale it up step by step you can start with one or two as i said or and then scale up after time so it's modular and scalable and that not just technically but let's also say um economically and also the fact that you already have a big part of the system that you need other than in a pure lithium system where you would need um, a new charging technology and long times of installation, whilst here you have 10 minutes. So it makes it also cheaper than a pure lithium solution. Plus, you have all the benefits um, of having also the lead acid battery. First of all, you have something that's like, we call it double redundancy, where you have first the modularity of the LE300 as such. So if one module out of, let's say, six fails, you will always have five modules that keep working. Plus, you have the lead acid battery that keeps working. So that means that if you are somewhere in a remote place where a lithium system would be hard to repair, um, here with the lead acid battery system, you can get repair everywhere, basically, in the world where, where cars drive. So that makes it very easy. Plus, obviously, as I said, there's also some people who have a functioning system still, and although they could use lithium, they say, yeah, but my battery is still working. I just want some more capacity. Yeah. So now these people, if they would want a new lead acid battery, they would have to get like a second battery, or, like two new batteries, basically. Let's say they have one and want more capacity, they would need two batteries because you should not combine a new battery with an old one. Here, you can just add the module as it is to the existing battery and that also like it's not much more expensive to put one module or two modules in comparison to two new lead acid batteries um so yeah you can also have good uh, value for money let's say here plus you still have the good effects of the of the lead acid battery for example lead acid batteries they are stronger than lithium batteries and everything that is discharged if we quickly go back here, mm. just to the to the graphics, do you see this? We have here the blue curve, which is the lead acid battery current. Yes. And we have the red one, which is the LE300, and the green one, which is the load. So the discharge of the lead acid battery of the LE300 is limited to 12.5 ampere. How? And here you see that as long as we stay underneath that we just take the load from from the le 300 the battery current but when we have a higher load which is the green line 
we use the capacity of the lead acid battery as well. Okay. So here, if for example, somebody has, let's say, a coffee machine or even an air fryer or something on board, they can use this discharge capacity of the of the lead acid battery system. Plus also the robustness to cold. So if the lithium doesn't work anymore in the cold, then the lead acid will keep working. So there's really like lots of reasons why you can also, yeah, why it is also good to just keep your lead acid battery. Okay, and we touched on um, on these working in the cold w briefly. Um, can you tell us more about the clever little heating system on, on, on these? That, um, how, how does that work? And how, how does the temperature affect lithium? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, in general, like normal lithium systems, they don't function well in the cold. Uh, they need some some heat. They they lose capacity um, in the cold. But the LE three hundred has integrated cell heating. So this means that when it's working together with the lattice battery, it'll heat up the cells internally. And this means like in in um, together with the temperature sensor. So if it gets cold, the battery cells will heat up. And it'll be like between five and ten degrees warmer than the outside temperature, depending on the insulation outside. Yeah. So this means that you can also use it in colder temperatures than a normal lithium battery. Plus, at some point, also the LE three hundred will turn off, and then you still have your lead acid battery to function in the cold until it gets warmer again. Okay, and um, a lot of boats these days have uh, solar power or wind generators on. Um, is it okay to use the LE300 uh, with your lead acid and being charged by solar or, or wind power? Yeah, that's actually great value for money if you combine it like that. Because um, then also again, back to the presentation, if we see the charging, like in general, we can say that the LE300 really maximizes the charging efficiency of a, a lead acid battery system. So here again, we have the blue lead acid battery current, the red LE300 battery current, and the green charge current. So well, here we are charging the system. And here we have the ampere and also the time again. So as I said, we charge the lead acid battery first. So here we use the maximum charging capacity of the current, uh, of, the, of the charger, and we charge the, the lead acid battery as quickly as possible. But then after time, like at 80% more or less, the lead acid battery cannot charge that quickly anymore. It cannot take up this power and then, or this energy. And then in this, in this moment, that's when, if we have a solar system, we will lose the solar power we're generating because the lead acid battery can simply not store it anymore. Mm -hmm. However, together with the LE300, we can then take up and charge all the overpluses or the surpluses that we have in this moment. So then the solar energy is stored in the LE300 until this is full again, and then it will just start uh, charge the lead acid battery until this one is full. So we can really um, also increase the outcome of our solar system. And also because we have the solar, we need a little less lithium um, to really have our batteries charged during the day because we have this um, extra source of energy. Right, so it's actually providing a more efficient uh, store energy storage system basically yeah exactly yeah. yeah okay and then in terms of sizing rules you know um is there any sizing guides you have like how many modules do you need per battery capacity um is there any any sort of rule of thumb um guide that you have yeah like the rule of thumb uh for let's say best value for money is like one LE300 with 100 ampere hours of lead acid, but that really also depends. Like um, you have to see what you what you need. For example, if you have uh, like uh, appliances which need lots of discharge capacity, like peak discharge, then you will need more lead acid. If you have more like little appliances that you use during the day and you just need like capacity to run during the day, then you need the lithium, for example. It also depends obviously a bit on your inverter size or everything uh, and everything. But yeah, this is like the rule of thumb that we have one module per 100 amp hours. Okay. Um, and, you know, I could see this being great for on your house battery. Um, 
is it okay for also using on a, your cranking battery, your starting battery? Is that okay? Yeah, that is okay as well, because as you see, like all peaks are also taken by the lead-acid battery. So if you already have this battery, that's fine as well. You can think about if you um, don't think that you really need the LS300 on the starter battery in summer, you could also just use it for extra capacity on your house battery during summer yeah. um, and then split up the modules for winter to protect both batteries, if you like that. Yeah, because they're fairly easy to swap in and out. It's yes, not a yes, really yes. complicated install. So, so yeah. the other the other thing is, um, in a twenty four volt system, um, can you connect them in series to for a twenty four volt system? Is that a possibility? Prince, like generally, yes. However, like whilst the twelve volt system is really like the do it yourself system, the twenty four volt system isn't. Uh, and it also like you have to check on the configuration that you want to do with us. So we don't give a general recommendation for that. However, you can double check with us uh, with BOS and um, yeah, then we can go through that together. However, this should only be done by professionals and it's very important to install an active balancer with that. So here you really need some extra material. So 12 volt straightforward, 24, a little bit more complicated. Yes, yes. Uh, and then um, battery chemistry. There are gel batteries and AGM batteries. Um, I guess these will, these will work alongside them. Is that correct? Yeah, like it functions with all types of these batteries. However, like if you're thinking about getting a new battery, like also lead acid battery, you don't have to buy gel or AGM to make it better value for money, like really, um, or better, uh, like more functional. It was really designed to work with the simplest uh, types of lead acid batteries so yeah. yes yeah. so it brings the price down really because uh, you know lead acid is the cheapest of, of of the battery technologies and and this will give you a hybrid system i guess so um mm -hmm. and then um it, the the next question is um in terms of storage with lithium batteries um would, would you so say if you weren't going to install this for i don't know a six months or so it, do you can you store it empty or does it have to be fully charged to store it on the shelf it doesn't have to be fully charged as i said like the lithium batteries they don't like to be fully charged so if um yeah the ideal charging state of charge would be between 70 and 30 percent more or less like that um however if it discharges it can still live for quite a long time in this discharge mode and then you can just charge it again and uh, turn it back on but yeah uh, that's that's fine you shouldn't leave it for two years without charging on yourself but uh, yeah it can handle that definitely well i think we've covered most things um uh, there there is a there is a question from a from a mm -hmm. customer saying um uh, how, how does it work if you have a shunt on the lead acid battery to a uh, to a battery monitor how would that affect the readings on the battery monitor like in general not there's nothing like um, there will not be an effect for the lead acid battery as such so if you just keep measuring your lead acid battery that's fine um what you can what we have done with several brands is that we also connect um the LA300 to the analog tank sensor. So then you can also measure lithium and lead acid separately, actually. Um, so that functions as well. Yeah, so there's there's different way to also monitor, depending on what you want, really. Okay. Um, I think we've covered pretty much everything. I mean, if there's anything else you can think of, but I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, uh, just... Thank you very much for, for coming and joining us today. And thanks for our producer, Elise, who's working in the background. Um, and uh, I guess we'll, we'll see you guys next time.